Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to share with you guys my tips and advice for living on your own for the very first time. So right now a lot of you are in transition. You're either going off to college and living on, on your own for the first time or moving from your parents' house to a home or an apartment, maybe getting married, and this is all new and you've never done this before. So hopefully this video will help ease you into this transition because it can be a little overwhelming at times, but in all, it's a really exciting time. So I'm gonna share with you my top nine tips, nine being my favorite and what I think is the most important. So we're gonna start with number one and work our way there. And the very first tip is make a list. I know this seems so basic, I promise this video won't be this lame, but if you make a list of everything that you have to do, all the things that are floating in your mind, all the things that are stressing you out, put it in one location. Put it on a notepad, in your planner, on your phone, wherever. And then what you can do is each day or when you get the chance, go and look at that list, pick one thing to do on that list and then do it. This way you know where to start now. I know when I first moved out of my parents' house and with my husband, I didn't know where to start. And my mother-in-law said, if you make a list, just pick one thing to do off the list and that's where you start. So that's how I started and that really helped me. Number two is group like things together in the place where you want them to be. Where do things go? You don't know. You need to create a home for all your things now. And the best way to create a home for where those things belong so that you don't have random things scattered all over the place and then you can't find anything is by putting like things together and putting it in the general location of where you want it. So put all your laundry stuff together. Put that in the laundry room or your designated spot for your laundry that you choose. Put all your clothes in your dresser or your closet. Put all your DVDs together, put it in the living room. So this way you have a, a, the general location of where you want things and you know all those things are together. And then, this, this is the important part, go back and organize them. You don't have to organize them right away. Moving out and living on your own can be really stressful. You don't need to move and organize perfectly at first because this is such a large transition in your life, you need to figure out what works for you, what your natural tendencies are. So don't feel pressured to organize right away. Go back and do that later and pick one thing at a time to organize. So tip number three is really simple and that is to simply do an address change. It takes just a couple minutes, you go on the post office website, you click change of address and you fill out the form from there. It's really easy. The reason why we do this is because all your mail from your old location will now be forwarded to your new location and you won't get checks or important things lost in the mail. They will all come straight to you, especially in case you forget to um, do a change of address on one of your accounts or something. You know, everything will come to the proper location. Number four is to set up some basic systems at first. And these are things I think you should do almost immediately. And one of those systems is find a designated spot for your keys and for your purse. For your keys, that might mean a little hook on the wall or like a little bowl sitting on your counter or something. But this way you always know where they are and you're not fumbling for them. And that's just a very clean basic system knowing always where your purse and your keys go. Another system I think you should set up right away is a receipt system. Uh, especially if you have a new place, you're probably going to be buying stuff for your place and you're going to need to know where to put those receipts so they're not scattered all over the place and if you need to return something or your accountant needs something, you know where they're all at. Stick them all in a jar, in a box. I keep mine on the inside of my cabinet and I even did a video on that so if you're interested in that, I'll link that below. But come up with a basic receipt system, putting them all in one location so you know where they go. And the third system I recommend is a mail station or a little mail sorting area where as soon as you get your mail, I recommend you going through it right away. Throw away immediately that junk mail, the stuff that you don't need. Put all the magazines that you want to read in the magazine section could be a basket or a bin, and then you may want to have like a little action area or file to where the things that need your attention, you can put in that action file, and then 
then maybe also have a two file section or immediately go and file the things that need to be filed. This way you know where those papers go. As soon as you get them, they have a home and your papers do not pile up. Tip number five kind of goes along with what I was just saying, but I do think it warrants its own category and that is set up a filing system. This can be a very basic system. There's all kinds of ways to do it. So you could pick one that goes with your learning style. You can do a filing notebook or notebooks. You could do a file box, a little file caddy that sits on your desk and that has your file folders in it, a filing cabinet, whatever you want to do, create a filing system. And in this filing system, you're going to put all your important paperwork. And that is things like your social security card and your birth certificate. You should have those things, your mortgage paperwork or your lease agreement, your taxes, any medical papers, things like that. So set up a basic filing system that houses the important paperwork that you need so this way you know where to put them and you know where to retrieve them from. Tip number six is to get to know your surrounding area. This again is very basic, but it helps sometimes somebody telling you this. <laughs> if you move towns or if you move states, you may have to move certain things like going to a Target instead of a Walmart or switching your grocery stores or your mall or your dry cleaning or your nail place. So especially like if you do switch towns, you may not want to drive an additional 15 to 20 minutes to where you used to go get your dry cleaning. You're going to want to try to find a local spot. So just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what you might have to switch and just get to know the places around you. And if you want any advice on where to find your new staple places to go, ask a local. You see somebody's nails that you like, say, hey, where did you get your nails done? I like that. And this way you can kind of learn with less trial and error the new places that you may want to start going to. Tip number seven. Tip number seven is one of my favorites because it's so easy but really helpful and that is only buy food as you need it. Now that you're living on your own for the first time, you probably have to buy all your own groceries and that can be intimidating at first. So my advice is don't go to the store and just buy a bunch of staples because you think a home needs these things. You know, don't buy flour just to buy flour. What you should do is really just buy food as you need it. So if you want to bake cookies, go to the store and buy the stuff for your cookies. And then the next time you bake cookies, you have the ingredients. I also really recommend you putting together a meal plan. Even if you're just one person, put together a meal plan. Know what you're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It can be really basic. And then make a list of the food items you need from your meal plan and then go to the store and get those. Now you have all your food for the week and you know you're gonna eat it. Tip number eight is to put together a basic schedule. And what I mean by that is create time for things like errands, cleaning, laundry, meal planning and cooking. Like I said, even if you're one person, you still need to find time for these things. And sometimes even finding a designated time to hang out with your friends or your spouse or something. I know me and my husband, we have a date night. That doesn't mean that we don't talk to each other throughout the week. It just means that we have that uninterrupted quality time together. So think about those things in conjunction with your work schedule and try to find a spot and a time slot for all these other things and you might be thinking this is really constricting making a schedule to do all those things I don't I don't know about that well I have to say it's actually really freeing because what you're doing is just organizing your time and if your time is organized that means you will have more of it this is to save your time your time is precious so we got to learn how to implement these things into your everyday life to really save time and also get these things done. Sometimes it's like cleaning a little bit each day. Sometimes it could be like cleaning on a Saturday when you're off of work. So once you put your schedule together, you'll do it and then see what really works for you and what doesn't work for you. And you might have to change things around until you get it down. And then from there, you'll know when to finagle and move things around if need be. So like for instance, with our date night, we always have it on Thursday night, but if something comes up that we have to do, we know we can always move it to Wednesday or Friday. So we still get that time in and we get to do that extra thing too. I'm also going to leave a bunch of resources below talking 
specifically about this area. So you guys can read that if you're interested in learning more about this. And lastly, but not least, tip number nine, and that is create a budget. And some of you are probably like, oh great, a budget. Yes, create a budget. Again, it's not restricting, it's actually freeing, and here's why. Even the wealthy people budget their money. Why? Because you're simply telling your money where to go versus it telling you where it wants to go. That's what all a budget is. You just know where your money is going and you know what you want to spend where. This is really crucial when living on your own. So what to do to put together a basic budget, all you do is know what you make monthly, know what your monthly expenses are, subtract your expenses from what you make monthly, and then what you're left with is all your leftover money that you can now buy furniture with, clothes with, go out to eat with, that sort of thing. Now some of you, oh goodness, okay it's thundering outside right now, I live in Florida and it rains every afternoon and the thunderstorms are here. Now some of you are like, Stephanie, I am living on my own for the first time. I don't know how much my grocery bill is going to be and I don't know how much, you know, how long toilet paper is going to last me and how often I will have to buy that and dish soap and laundry detergent, all these things that I now have to buy that I never had to buy. How do I know how to budget for that? My advice for you is budget about $100 per week. Some of you might think that's a lot. Some of you might think that's too little. It all depends on how you eat and where you live. But roughly pick a number, I picked 100, and see what you can do on that. See how your groceries last on that, see how your extras and all your toiletries and everything go on that, and all your household items like trash bags. And then from there you'll know to whether you can adjust it down or whether you need to adjust it up. After about three months you should know really what you spend where and then you can implement those things into your budget and have more of a structured budget knowing exactly what you're spending where. Things like your gas and your cell phone bill and stuff like that. All that is pretty much, you know what that's going to be every month, but it's the things like your grocery bill and the household items, you may not know exactly what to spend every month, so that will take some time, again, about three months for you to learn what you spend where, and then you'll really know what your budget is. And honestly, guys, this is, like I said, much more freeing. You'll have financial peace, knowing you know where your money is going, you are choosing where your money is going, and you have no bills creeping up on you, you aren't forgetting any bills everything is paid for so put together a budget that's the best thing you can do for yourself and that is it those are all my tips if you have anything additional you want to add please leave a comment below I'm also gonna leave you a ton of resources budget wise I really recommend Rachel Cruz and Dave Ramsey they're amazing they've helped my husband and I budget and they have amazing resources, whether you're in college or a family with a bunch of kids, there's something there for everyone. And if you wanna know more about this, this topic, I will definitely link that all below. Rachel Cruz has a YouTube channel, really short videos, very informative. I highly, highly recommend it. No, they're not paying me to say that. I've just really done it and I really love it. I'm a huge advocate and I think it would really help you. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.